How's it going, everybody? This is Jose Trujillo, world's greatest living artist, coming to you from the art studio where we get to do all kinds of cool stuff. I hope you guys can join me. Uh, maybe get it a little bit closer that way you guys can see it. I don't know. You guys can see some of the brushwork. Thank you guys for joining. How's it going? Anna Franklin Art Walker. Walker Walker's Art. How's it going? How's it going, Aaron Teeks? Era Antiques. Semino Wood. How's it going? Good to see you. Bam! There's my hand too. Oh man, my hand's like full of paint. And long nails, dirty nails. I gotta I gotta cut my nails. Guys, I'm gonna do a painting right now. I'm gonna do a, a little uh, scene right here, maybe some figures. Who knows? We'll play it by ear as I usually do. Going great, awesome, awesome. Uh, let me show you guys a little bit of what I'm going to do here. Let's see, let me, you know what I need to do? I need to show you guys the palette because I think that, just bear with me, okay guys? Because I only got one camera and I'm gonna show you guys the palette. And then I'm gonna show you guys, let's try to make some more light, hopefully. And then I'm gonna show you guys, um, I'm gonna go back and forth, okay? What's up, people? This is Jose Trujillo, only the world's greatest living artist. And no, I'm not in the bathroom. That's not, this toilet paper is for, <laughs> to clean my brush. <laughs> I put my glove on, because the doctor is about to operate. Bam! Oh, a little shout out to myself. Bam, I collect Trujillo. Check him out. Eh... Uh, there we go. Bam! <laughs> a little shout out to myself. <laughs> I love that. Let's get going, guys, because I know some of you are like, what's going on? Check it out. I got this brush. Super awesome. It was like, it was really expensive. It was like, uh, like I don't know, like $2 or $3, something like that. Super expensive brushes. I only used the best. Let me show you guys a little bit of what I do. Hopefully, you guys can see the oil right here. Keep this wet. You keep this wet. Uh, it really depends, right? It really depends on, 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 on how you do things. Let me, bam, like that. Let's go. Now some of this stuff is a lot of uh, uh, shameless memory. <laughs> and it's part of what I, maybe I'm gonna start talking about right now. Uh, one of the things, guys, that I found out in artwork is that the person with the highest self-esteem almost always, always wins. I don't know why I didn't make the rules. I just play by them. If you happen to be blessed, if, you're, if your parents bless you with high self-esteem, uh, you have a pretty darn good chance of being a, of being a super awesome artist. If you didn't, just work on it. <laughs> uh, most parents do a horrible job at it. Uh, not because not because parents are mean necessarily, but because they just they don't know better, right? They're trying to they're trying to they're trying to keep us out of trouble and and, and be good to us, but not necessarily uh, uh, make us uh, 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 believe in ourselves. It's always kind of like you have to do it on you know you you, you can't do it without me sort of thing, you know, so. This is one of the things that I noticed. You have to, you have to, you have to. It doesn't matter what type of artwork you do. Uh, figure out how you can be shameless at it. And what I mean shameless is that you're not, you're not, uh, you're not sad because something didn't come out right. You know, you're like, all right, well, next time. All right, well, next time, you know, next time. And that helps you uh, it does something, right? People started, start noticing that you are walking the walk and people are like, dude, I love that. I love it. Because who doesn't like someone who's, uh, not me shameless as in, as in, as in being a, uh, uh, like a, like a jerk or anything like that. I'm talking about shameless in the sense of, of not having any shame. <laughs> There's a lot of shame in artwork, you know? 
you don't have the right technique. Oh, I'm going to shame you. Or I don't have the right blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm being shamed. And, you know, there's all this uh, uh, vulnerability, but not in the good, not in the good way. Not in, in, the, in the new age type of understanding. And really what I'm trying to say is, look, there's a lot of people out there. I encounter them almost daily. Uh, that all they want to do is tell you that you're not doing things right. Okay, and online we call them trolls. Offline, uh, they're trolls too. <laughs> and and the thing is that these people, I used to listen to them. I don't listen to them anymore, but I used to listen to them, right? And what they do is that their masters are getting right in your head. As it going, people, their masters are getting right in, in your head, and and the way they do it is by shaming you. Right? Uh, because it works, right? Shame works. Uh, guilt, right? It's really what? It's, it's a form of, of guilt, right? It's like you're not good enough, you know? Or you're not doing this right. Or, you know, sort of like the same way that, that maybe some of us, most of us, I would, I would say, without trying to offend anyone, I'm not trying to say anything negative. It's not, it's not something negative. It's just the way we're conditioned. Like mom can, mom, mom can shame us in being like, why haven't you called, son? Or, you know, or why haven't you come and visited? You know, and there's a little, there, it's not, it's a, it's a little guilt, right? Because it works, it works. Guilt works, right? But uh, it's it's sort of a, a form because it was done to, to mostly to them, most likely to them, and then they do it to us, and then we do it to our kids, and, and then, oh, man, like, we have to grow out of it, right? And... Um, but it, I've noticed in artwork, there's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of, man, my style is not there yet. You don't have the skills yet. You don't, you know, and there is no room for growth. There is no, that's why if, if you, if you comment, uh, if you try to, uh, not comment, if, if you try to show me some of your work, uh, some people have told me that, man, that's being disingenuous, you know, because I tell everyone, man, you're doing fabulous. Keep up the great work. Keep up the good work. And someone told me you're being disingenuous because because that's not true. It's better to criticize them. And I'm like, who am I to crit to critique and criticize them? Like, who am I to give them critique? If if they're putting in the time, they don't need me. You know, the best I can. My critique is if you're gonna show me your work, my critique is, dude, just put in the time. Don't worry about anything else. You know, put in the time, keep learning, and and you got it. You got it. And. But there's a lot of stuff out there, right? That it's that it's geared towards shame, like, like uh, you know, some sort of. So it creates guilt. It creates guilt. It creates like, oh man, I'm not. And I've noticed over and over in all of the artists in the world, these people were shameless. At least when they appear, they, they appear that way, right? I'm sure they weren't. I'm sure they were, just like everyone else. But they probably practice that muscle. Not probably. I'm sure that they practice how to be shameless. And it takes practice because uh, the world is a beautiful place. But as who, one, of, one of the philosophers said, what was the name of the philosopher? I think it was a, an existential philosopher uh, who said, hell is other people. <laughs> and we can do that to each other. You know, we can do this, this sort of... Uh, uh, shaming thing, right? This sort of negative thing where we're like, you know, you got to prove to me that you're doing great, you know, and, and or you got to prove to me that you actually practice. Check it out, guys. Those of you watching, check it out. Bam! <laughs> you got to you gotta practice being uh, shameless. And, and I mean, you don't have to. I, I talk like that. I'm very like, I would be a, a Sith Lord, I guess, because they say uh, in Star Wars that you're, that, you can't be totalitarian. And I'm very totalitarian when it comes to stuff. <laughs> some stuff for me is like musts. You know, I'm very like, you got to do it this way. And some stuff is like, don't worry about it. Uh, one of the things I found out is that, is that if you practice uh, losing shame, man, you, you, you are at an advantage. If you practice losing that guilt, you know, that people like to, uh, in, 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 the society, you know, society imposes its skills. And, and sometimes we're like, I'm not good enough. And it's not that you're not good enough. You're not good enough to the perception 
of what you think good enough is, right? You're, you're not good enough to that. How many of you, like, like, please raise your hand. Give me, give me a little hand up or give me some hearts. How many of you, just to let me know, right? <laughs> How convenient, give me some hearts. Just to let me know that that's happened to you. How many of you guys have seen people that paint way shittier than you and have much more success? Like, how many people have seen that? Because I, I, like, someone might be like, I'm seeing that now, dude. <laughs> how many people have seen people that paint way, way worse than you, super shitty, and they're like, and they're like rocking it, you know? They're like, don't you think people felt like that about Picasso? Like people that were the proper painters of the time. I mean, people felt like that about, about Van, not, not Van Gogh, because Van Gogh didn't, didn't acquire it. Uh, Van Gogh had the, the talent, but he was missing other stuff. Uh, but don't you think people were feeling like that about Monet, or, or, or later on about, I don't know, Brock, whoever, you know? Uh, Chagall, de Kooning, right? Uh, today, people feel like that about Coons, right? Damien Hurst, right? This, 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 these bastards are shameless. They're just shameless when it comes to creating artwork, you know? <laughs> Extremely shameless. And, and I think that that is the winning formula. These are some of the stuff that I keep using, guys. This is some of the stuff that I use. Some of these, uh, Genesee Quas. And these are my most expensive brushes right here. <laughs> but, you know, we always see people that are like, man, they're like... They're like, dude, how, how can you get away selling that, you know, at that price? And, and you know, and, and I mean, think about Warhol, right? He, the, the guy didn't even paint, right? <laughs> the guy didn't even paint. And, and, you know, so, so we, have this, we have this thing, right? This stigma, I think it's a stigma in art, where we're like, prove to me. You got to put in the, 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 the work uh, in a sufficient time with with monetary value or or you know whatever right we equate we try to balance it we try to look for well you know i spent an hour so it should be worth yeah picasso spent like one minute at most on some of his drawings or maybe even paintings and <laughs> and you know look at what they what they're valued at and i'm not saying that 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 is the value right, of the painting itself, that is the value that the market is placing, and on and on and on, there's many more things happening, right, but what I'm trying to say is that there, there was a, a, a shamelessness less in the creation of artwork, that's why Picasso used to say, if I could just remove, right, if we just remove our heads when we create artwork, why, because, because the judgment, judgmental, the judgmental person in us, right, uh, is, uh, it's gone, right? At least for that moment. And, and then we can create some artwork, right? And then we, we're free to create some artwork. Let's put a little, let's put some of my awesome people right here because someone's gotta be walking around here. And that's one of the things that I've seen, you know, over and over, I'm like, how is it? Maybe I'm the only guy who's saying it right now. I don't know. Because I know a lot of people are like, it's not, it's not right, you shouldn't say stuff like that, but so many people consider my work super shitty, and I sell it left and right. You know, I'm I I I'm, I don't know what I'm doing right completely. I'm just doing it right. But I know that that a lot of people think because they tell me you know just about on a daily basis, right? Man, your work sucks, dude. And how do you how do you get away with selling it? You know, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I used to get offended. I used to be like, "What? Excuse me? No, my work is awesome, right?" And then I was like, "Well, you know, maybe from this person's perspective, my work sucks, right?" And then I, and then I, I have some free time, rarely, but sometimes I have free time, right? And I'll see something by by uh, uh, William de Kooning, right? And then I see some of his abstract work that was very like, ah, 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 you know? And, you know, almost like a performance, right? Performance art, like, so almost action painting, right? And then, or, or Basquiat, right? The, the, the super awesome artist, but the work was very immediate, right? To work, the work, uh, he used to finish large paintings in like less than an hour. And uh, the Radiant Child, right? <laughs> And it, there was a sort of a, a, a shamelessness, right, that that occurred. 
in the creation of the artwork. I don't know in, in other parts of their life, but in the creation of the artwork. And I'm like, man, I gotta be like this, cats. I gotta be, because, because, you know, to, to someone, your work sucks. To someone out there. It doesn't matter how good you are. You know, to someone out there, you, whatever you do, it's not good enough. Or maybe even to, to a lot of people, right? And I noticed that the common denominator, again, with these winning cats, is that it's not that they don't care in the creation of their work. They care very much at the creation. Uh, it's not that they don't care. It's that they don't get stuck. I think that's the difference. They don't get stuck in the work. They don't get stuck in the mechanics of the work. So they're able to produce artwork at a shameless... Uh... <laughs> Again, the word of the day, what is it? Shameless. <laughs> they're able to produce work at a, at, a, at a pace and a rate. And I believe that that is why people uh, know them as being prolifics, right? They're like, oh, name a great artist, you know? Name an artist that wasn't prolific. I know someone told me Vermeer. Ah, whatever, dude. Okay, let's not name Vermeer because who knows about Vermeer. Let's name someone from this century <laughs> or the past century. All artists that are, that, are, that are doing something or have made a name for themselves were extremely prolific, right? Uh, even the ones that didn't, like Van Gogh was extremely prolific. He didn't, he didn't make a name for himself when he was alive, but he was extremely prolific. And... Uh, and I see that thing, you know, that thing just keeps popping up. These people are, are just in tune with themselves, right? They're just in tune. And they're not thinking or overthinking about what the hell they're doing, right? So I urge you, guys, I urge you. This is a communication to all artists out there. Practice shamelessness. This does not mean that you don't care about your product. It means that you don't sit there and cry about it. It means that you just create it and on to the next. And you create and okay, all right, well, this is that. All right, cool. It's good enough. Good is good enough because, because what's coming out of you is already what you know. I mean, nothing, you know, it's only small increments that you're getting better. You're not, you're not taking quantum leaps from day to day, right? It's not like yesterday I painted like this. Right? Or today I paint like this and tomorrow it's going to be like, you know, 10 times better, right? Or 100 times better. No, it's small increments, right? In a year it just gets better. It cooks, right? It cooks. In another year it gets a little bit better and on and on and on and on. So, so it's, the, it's that idea of, you know, how we get stuck. We're like, oh man, I'm, I don't know if... You know, how did I do that right? And we're like, we get stuck. And really we get stuck not because of us. I don't think, I don't really think it's because of us, because of our own. You know how people, how people are always saying, well, you get stuck because you're trying to, uh, you're trying to be uh, super responsible and you care about the work and whatnot. Uh, actually, no, you get, I don't believe that. I believe you get stuck because you're thinking about how you're going to look amongst other people. Just imagine yourself. There's no other people. You're painting alone in an island, right? You're the last person in the island or the first person or whatever. No one will ever, by any chance, ever see your artwork. No one gives a, a damn about how fast you do it, how slow you do it, how big, how small, what colors you use, what's the, the, the damn colors of that stupid palette, what stupid tools you use, whether you use a brush, a palette knife, your fingers, or a piece of cardboard. Let's say that nobody cares, right? Because nobody cares, like you're the only one there. So what does it matter, right? You would be, you would be free, right? You would, be, you would have the most freedom in, creation of, in your creation of the artwork. The thing is that when we're creating, we are thinking whether we know it or not, whether when we're creating it or, we're, or, or maybe you don't think about it when you're creating it, you think about it once you finish creating it and you're like, man, I gotta retouch that. Or you think about it when you finish creating and retouching, you're like, man, I gotta put in the right, the right frame, right? I gotta put in the right frame. Or maybe, maybe let's take it in further. It's gotta be in the right gallery. Cause oh my God, God forbid that I just show it on, you know, on YouTube or somewhere. And so there's this, this, this constant, constant, I, I, I see it as a, as a pressure, right? This constant pressure. It's choking you, it's choking you. Let's imagine that, that this is a, 
This is your head right here. And it's like choking you. <laughs> it's choking. <laughs> the shame chokes everybody. Right? The shame, the, the not feeling enough, it chokes everyone and it cuts the flow of your potential and your creativity. And we do this on a daily basis. We do this in different ways. They're subtle. Some are more, more uh, apparent, right? They're, 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 they're aggressive uh, uh, things that happen to us. Like we're, we're creating artwork and all of a sudden we throw it away, right? I used to do this when I was younger. It's like, oh, I can't take it anymore and break it and throw it away. That's, a, that's an aggressive shame, right? Because, because it doesn't feel right to, not to me, right? Because we think it's to me. No, to how I'm going to be perceived as. Because remember, if you're in an island and no one's watching it, then who gives a damn, right? Let's say that you, you get put in an island and you're going to create this work. And once the work is completed, it's going to be burned and no one will ever see it. But you have all the, all the, the yeah, there's no photography, there's nothing, but you're going to go create the work there for, I don't know, you're going to be stuck in an island for a year and you have to create all the work you can and you have all the materials and everything is there and there's no, there's no complaining, there's no nothing. You have everything there, but no one will ever see the work. You just, you know, you've, you've been giving, uh, I don't know, $10 million to do that and go create all the artwork that you want in an island. No one will ever see it. Wouldn't you be free? Wouldn't you have the freedom to be, to be, you know, F it, you know, like I'm just going to create work. Wouldn't you have a freedom? The thing is that we don't live like that. We live in this perpetual necessity to comply and to and to be liked and to please 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 like it oh my god i did this wrong i used the wrong white here oh oh the line is crooked god forbid someone sees the line is crooked you know or whatever maybe you paint realism and the gesture didn't come out right or you didn't catch the correct light you know you didn't, you didn't use the correct shade right and then on and on and on because we're trying to be liked you know, that's, we carry ourselves like this throughout the world, right? We carry ourselves like this. Like, please like me. Oh, I did a painting. Hey, Ma, look, I can paint. Look at it. And, and, and we, don't, we never give ourselves the, the opportunity. You know, very rarely we, we, we see that or we do that. And the ones that actually do it are the bastards who are making it. And I call them bastards. Because <laughs> they, you know, they have the cojones to go do it, right? They're like, you know what? I'm just not going to care. I'm going to be me. I'm going to create artwork and, and I'm going to do the best I can, right? With my abilities, but it's not going to be to please. It's not going to be to feel loved, to feel uh, validated by a group of people or the world. I'm just going to create artwork and, and that's all I'm going to do. And because the reality is, is that your artwork is not your, the, 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 the income or the opportunities that you get from your artwork, right? The resources, the, the whatever opportunities you're getting from your artwork usually is income or it's gallery shows or publications or whatever. It's not in direct proportion to anything that has to do with the artwork other than you putting your heart and soul to it. That's all. See, but we keep basing it out of skill level. We keep basing it out of out of trends. Oh my God, it's teal. It's the year of teal. I have to use teal in my, in my artwork, you know? Or we keep basing it on all of these things, uh, to the color teal, uh, turquoise or whatever. Uh, so, you know, what, is, what do people call it now? Uh, oh man, I forgot the color. It's a cool name from that company or that, that, that the industry that, that, that shoots out the, the, the names of the colors. I think it's Pantone or Pantatone or something like that. Anyway. So we keep basing it out of all these things rather than, you know what, I'm just going to do the best I can. Because that's the reality. The reality in the marketplace is that you put your heart and soul to it, right? You, heart and soul, not your mind. You put your heart and soul to it and then you do that aggressively and then you kick, you know, you kick ass every day. And then the world will, 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 will uh, compensate you for that. You know, it's just, it's just the way it is. I have no other way of saying it. So there you guys have it. I believe it 100%. The world will compensate you if you are aggressive at what you do and you work hard. It's not, 
It's not your, your the other stuff. It's not all the other fluff. It's not your your skill level because it can't be your skill level because you're always growing, right? Unless you're unless you're barely starting, right? Then you're you know, you're, but many of us have already been painting for years, you know, two, three years, five years, and we still act like our skill level is not good enough. That's what I'm talking about. Now, if you only have a week painting, keep practicing, okay? <laughs> keep practicing but don't don't try to over practice to get somewhere you're always you're always going to be learning regardless of so there you guys have it this is this is a, a little street right here that i did because man i'm the world's greatest living artist i'm telling you guys the world has to catch up look at my palette muy macho <laughs> i love these bright colors check out this magenta Magenta. Look at that. This is pure gold. This is pure gold. Let's do a little something. There we go. Yeah! Let's give it a little shade right here. Finger painting. Whatever, you know, it's just creating artwork. You can't do anything wrong if you if if you're doing you. That's the way I see it anyways. I gotta take off this glove now because... How's it going? Uh, Alam, saludar, hey, saludos. Dude, I gotta use my Spanish skills because I speak Spanish too. Esos que hablan español, a ustedes que hablan español, mucho gusto, muchas gracias. Espero hacer un video en español pronto. And to my English speaking folk, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the hearts. I will be posting this awesome painting on eBay because I because I can because, you know, why not? Capitalist country. Let's do that. Uh, and besides, it'll help me buy more, more, more materials and on and on and on. So here we go. This is going to start at 99 cents. OK, it's going to be an auction. I'm going to start at 99 cents. It's going to be on, on eBay. My link is on my profile. Go check it out, guys. There's my pitch. And remember, guys, just, just, you know, just do it. Be shameless about it. Just create your artwork. Muchas gracias, Alam. Just create your artwork. Like, who cares? You know, F the haters. I, 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 I get a lot of people, like I told you guys, I get a lot of people daily, like, being like, dude, you're not good enough. That, why'd you do that? That's horrible. Blah, blah, blah. And all it really means is that you're doing something right. You know? If if you're getting if you're getting a yay or a nay, you're getting something. It means you're working. The problem is when you don't get yay or nay. That's really the problem. That's what you should be you should watch out for. You should watch out for the no criticism, indifference. All of that stuff means that you're not doing anything. It means that you're just you're just, you know, you're thinking. You're sitting there pondering, pondering, oh, I wish I could create artwork. Oh, but I'm not good enough yet. Or I wish I could, you know, go to a gallery. Oh, but, you know, maybe I'm not good enough yet. Maybe that gallery doesn't really want the type of artwork that I have. And on and on and on and on. Just got to do it. You know, just dive in. Get good at one thing. Get good at one thing. I know a lot of artists that are like, dude, I paint. And then I sculpt. And then I do this and I do that. I think that's awesome. I, I love doing that. I'm actually going to get into that. But what I'm saying is when you're starting out. When you're starting out, get good at one thing and then start moving to the other stuff. But but at least at least own something, right? Own something. Drawing, charcoal, ink, you know, watercolor, painting, whatever. Own it and then and then boom, start moving to the rest. I think it's a really cool way because because you not because you not because it, it's 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 a permission. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to like a permission to move to the next thing. And you know, don't move to something else until you figure something one first. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that it'll give you confidence. If you do something, you know, if you, you start if you start owning a your craft in one area, it's going to boost up your confidence and you'll be like, man, I can even do marble sculptures, you know, stuff like that. Whatever. Guys, take care. Thank you so much. I will talk to you soon, all right? Stay uh, stay safe. Stay cool. And those of you who are in cool places, uh, stay warm. Because I'm in Arizona, so here it's not it's not that cool. <laughs> it's not that, yeah, it's not that cool. It's very warm here. All right, guys. Take care. Adios.